Hey guys, in general, in the opening, beginners should stick to the principles like control the center, develop pieces and castle as soon as possible and not worry that much about memorizing opening moves. However, it's always very nice when uh, you're playing the opening and you know you're playing the right variation for you according to your level and according to your style always great to know for example where we should break in the middle game or which are typical weak squares on your opponent's position or on which wing of the board should we attack or play in the middle game that's why in this video you will learn how to play Italian game my favorite opening for beginners and you might be thinking okay but why this opening and the thing is that this variation is easy to learn easy to understand and easy to play for this level, but also there is a very natural and traditional development for our pieces and something very good is that we can play it with two different approaches. If you want to play it uh, positionally, you can do that with long term plans, but also if you want to be a little more aggressive and play more dynamically, we can also use this approach. So let's get into it. We have Italian game after the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop c4. The idea of this move, well, we are developing, we are preparing to castle, we are putting the bishop very active, targeting f7, also controlling the center over here. This is Italian game here. At this point, black can play some options. The two main lines for black are bishop c5 and knight f6. Those are the two best moves for black, but also uh, we can mention some sidelines like a6, like uh, fried anti fried liver, and they can try here d6 and they can try here knight d4. These are sidelines we are going to study here just to make sure we know how to play against them. And of course, we are going to focus then later on the two main lines bishop c5 and knight f6. If black plays anti fried liver, this line a6 controlling g5, the idea is that. For example, in our main lines, when black plays knight f6, uh, we can play knight g5, that's a variation. So it's very common in beginners to try something like this. So the knight cannot go there anymore. And, well, of course, uh, it's working fine to avoid knight g5, but the problem is that this move is not developing. So in general, when your opponent plays this anti fried lever, what we can do is to try to be aggressive and try to use this extra tempo we have and also try to use our development advantage. So the way to do that is to is by breaking in the center. So we can try to play d4 immediately and it's going to be very well and we will have a, a better opening and middle game. But also we can castle and prepare it a little better, like break after we castle or but like playing c3 and d4 later. And it's also going to be perfect. Either way, we will have the advantage. So that's the best way to play against this line. If they try something different like knight d4, this move is just a trap. They call it like a Blackburn chilling gambit. And the idea is that black is intentionally hanging. They're forgetting intentionally the pawn on e5. If we capture the pawn, we could be in trouble because black can play queen g5. If we, if we capture here on f7, they can capture here getting our rook. And if we move the rook, they check and maybe we need to block and then they are made in here with the knight on f3 so that's the main idea with this knight d4 of course we don't need to get into this line uh, the right way to play against this tricky variation we can see very often is just knight takes d4 and then some ways to play but probably this 3 is going to be perfect here this position is going to be very good we will have two very good bishops very good control in the center and also a very good development in this line and the other side line black can play here is d6 observe this move is a little passive now the bishop is going to be behind the chain of pawns at this point we can play something like d4 and again it's going to be very well we have a really nice position here a very good middle game but also if you want to play for a trap you can try here knight f3 and very often black plays bishop g4 just pinning we can play h3 here forcing the bishop to go back to h5 and here we have this legal trap we can play in this position knight takes e5 and well here black can play two things like capture the knight to capture the queen but if they capture the queen you have mate in two like check and the mate but also if they capture the knight like thinking 
okay I'm going to lose the bishop but also I'm getting another bishop over here so I will have the advantage it's not going to be like that we can just capture the bishop and when they capture our bishop on c4 we have this check and then we're getting the knight on c4 so we will have in the end one pawn up so let's get into the two main lines the two best moves black can play in this position they are knight f6 and bishop c5 so after knight f6 here we have some ways to play for example d3 is going to be fine you defend you develop and we have a very normal and natural development for the next moves but there is this line a little more aggressive knight g5 that is going to create some more problems for black here we are attacking the pawn on f7 so they need to play d5 that's the only move and here we're going to capture that pawn on d5 black can try some things here the best move is going to be knight a5 but also i want to highlight if they capture the pawn here with the knight they are getting into fried liver attack and in general this position is going to be good for white we can capture the pawn on f7 and then give a check and then uh, the idea is that we are also attacking the knight so probably we are getting the piece back and if they don't accept that if they defend as you can see the king is very exposed here so we can continue playing very aggressively like knight c3 and well this position is really complicated now uh, the lines are a little tricky but in general we can say white is better for example here we are getting the knight and black can play two moves to defend that knight like knight e7 or knight b4 I'm just going to tell you how to continue for example after knight b4 we are gonna play king d1 and the idea is that we are playing a3 we're defending the pawn on c2 that was threatened and also we're clearing e1 for the rook and well when I say a3 observe this knight cannot move because we're getting the knight on d5 so the position is going to be uh, really good the compensation is more than enough for white here but also observe that if the knight goes back to e7 we're gonna play here this surprising move d4 there is that we want to open black king there and if they capture we can give uh, a check but first we capture on d5 and then we give the check I was saying and when the king goes we capture the pawn first we're going to capture this knight but first let's take the pawn and uh, even if they defend you have the check again so when the king goes back to g6 then you can capture the knight this position is very good for white observe we already have a pawn up the king is still very unsafe and well in general we can say this is decisive advantage for white so back to this position a tricky move they can try is b5 here and the idea is that if we capture that pawn that seems to be very tempting then they are getting the pawn on d5 they are targeting here and here so they have some ideas over there so in general the right move here after this b5 the best move could be this surprising really hard to find in a game so this is something uh, we need to understand very well because it's a move that uh, we probably cannot find in a game and it is this bishop f1 the idea is that we are defending the pawn on g2 so if the queen takes the pawn on d5 then we can play knight c3 and we don't have to worry about this capture over there and when the queen moves for example we can capture the pawn now on b5 so the main line and probably the best move for black in this position is going to be this knight a5 here we're going to play bishop b5 check and here black can play two things block with the bishop block with the pawn if they block with the bishop we just play here queen e2 defending attacking this position is very playable for white probably we are slightly better if they block with the pawn we're going to trade and we're going to play this move queen f3 we're pinning because the rook is hanging behind this position is very unclear but also very playable and finally the most popular move for black in this position this bishop c5 here we have some options for example just to highlight something we can play Evans gambit with b4 very interesting but the line i want to suggest here is this c3 and black can play here knight f6 and this is the moment where we can try two different approaches this is what i meant at the beginning of the video here for example we can play d3 a little more positional play or we can play d4 a little more aggressive so just to show you what can happen with this d4 black needs to trade here so they can give the check over b4 and then we block this position seems to be great because we have two pawns in the center but now they can capture the pawn on e4 because there is a pin however this is fine because we are going to have compensation here we are going to castle 
And this is an interesting line. If they capture the pawn on c3, it's not the best move, but if they do that, just to show you what can happen, then we're going to play here this move queen b3. The idea is that we're attacking f7, but also we're attacking the bishop here. And if they capture the rook with check, and if they move like to f8, we're going to play bishop g5. This position is already too good. Observe that when the knight goes back to e7, we are going to play like rook e1, and the pressure is too much. And we are getting material advantage and decisive advantage too. The other more positional approach is when we play d3. This is what they call Yuko Pianissimo. And the idea is that we're not breaking right now. We're going to develop our pieces. We're going to castle. We're going to put our pieces in good positions. And then maybe when we are ready in the middle game, we're going to break over d4. It's the mindset with this d3. But also so in some positions, we can play over the king side and attack over there and delay a little that break. So just to show you how the line can continue here, black can play d6. We can play a3 and we want to avoid this bishop g4 very often. If you want to play for a trick, you can try a4 in these positions. And if they don't see your threat, we are playing here b4 and a5. That's a nice idea. So this a4 is not like a strong move, but it's a tricky move for blitz and bullets. I think it's going to work very well. So probably the best move is something like a3 to avoid definitely avoid this uh, bishop g4 and black can play here a6 and when black plays a6 they could be trying something like knight a5 because the, knight, the bishop cannot go to b5 now so in general after this a6 which is also very useful because they are clearing that square for their bishop we should try here bishop b3 so we are not uh, trading our bishop for the knight, our bishop can escape now to c2 if we need. So black can play here bishop a7 for example just to make sure we're not playing d4 at some point later and attacking the bishop and we can castle, black can play a6 here to avoid our bishop g5 and very often we play knight d2 in these positions. Black can castle, we can play rook e1 here and this is the idea, we want to clear f1 because we want to maneuver with this knight so we can develop uh, our queen side but also our knight is going to be great over g3 so that's the plan for example after rook e8 we can play here knight f1 and in the middle game we are playing knight g3 very often we can use this square for our knights like knight h4 knight f5 in some positions we want to play bishop e3 because this bishop here on a7 is really active and sometimes we want to trade those bishops. So depending on what happens on the next moves and how black develops, we could be playing on the king side and try to start an attack over there, also bringing the queen over f3. And the earth plan here is to try to break over f4, so once our pieces are in really good positions, we can just play in the center with these ideas of d4. So if you guys have any question, let me know in the comments. If you want to see the 10 most aggressive chess openings, check out this video over here. I highly recommend it. Thank you guys, like, subscribe, see you on the next.